are listening to a very special episode of the Sabrina Phillip podcast. Today's episode is actually the training that I did for my audience last week, all about money mindset and sales during the time of coronavirus. So we've taken that training and we've made it available for you here today. Now in this training, I really went in deep to money mindset and why that is so important now more than ever and gave some specific mindset tips and tricks to keep you at the top of your game right now. I also discussed sales and how consumer behavior has been shifting and what strategies you can put in place to not only maintain your income, but grow it right now and really make sure that your clients are seeing your products or services as essentials and not luxuries. So tune in, listen in, because this is going to be a good one. You're listening to the Sabrina Phillip podcast. In this show, online business coach and self-made millionaire Sabrina Phillip shows you how to do entrepreneurship your way. She moved to Bali with $800 in her bank account and just one year later had scaled her business to seven figures. Sabrina has been featured in Forbes, Business Insider, Goldcast, and Cosmopolitan. Using her signature, intentional, manageable, profitable framework, Sabrina helps women make millions online. Currently traveling the world, tune in each week as she reveals the best tips, tricks, and strategies for creating the intentional life and business of your dreams. Here's your host, Sabrina Phillip. What I'm going to be chatting about today is sales and money mindset during coronavirus. So um, what specifically you should be doing right now in your money mindset, in your business as it relates to sales so that you can um, move through this opportunity with a lot of growth and financial success and not be too impacted by what's going on. I've actually seen an increase in my business, both in sales and inquiries, um, because people know now more than ever that this is such a good time to have an online business. Um, So... Let me know where else you're watching from down below. Go ahead and tag your friends, share this with anyone who you think would really benefit and let's dive in. Um, So the first thing I wanna talk about when it comes to money mindset is there were a lot of people who were preaching mindset and all about mindset last month and saying that everything is so flowy and they're so in flow with the universe and everything just comes to them exactly the way that it's meant to. And then as soon as something tweaks or as soon as something goes wrong or as soon as something's hard or difficult or a global pandemic, that mindset completely disappears. And the thing about mindset is that mindset matters now more than it did a month ago. So you journaling every day a month ago, awesome. You stopping journaling now, terrible. You should be journaling in your journal twice as much now than you were a month ago. Hey, Tracy, um, your mindset now is so important more than ever. Mindset is not something that we do when it's easy. Mindset is something that we do when it's hard so that when we're in hard places and we do hard things, it feels so much easier. So your mindset is super, super critical right now. Now, when we're talking about money mindset specifically, before I do that, I'm gonna say what mindset is. If you're watching this video and you're like, what is this chick talking about? Mindset is essentially what you believe to be true and your perception of how the world works. So for example, my perception of how the world works is that I believe that we can have anything that we want in this life if we work for it. I think that there are definitely those who need to work harder than others. I think that it is our responsibility as humans to create as much equity and equality in the world so that people don't have to work harder than others. But fundamentally, I do believe that with the power of our mind, we can make anything happen. Um, If we go ahead and work for it, I don't think that you can wish things to you. I don't think that if you just, you know, sit there and meditate and close your eyes that a million dollars is going to smack you in the forehead. But I think that if you get up every day and you work and work and work on your business and you go get coaches or you go get a business degree and you do whatever it takes and you knock on a thousand doors, yes, I think you're gonna end up with a million dollars if you really, really work for it. So that's my belief about mindset. That's what I believe to be true in this world, that if I work for something, I will see that result. Why would that not be true now, right? If your mindset is dependent on circumstances, it's not actually a belief. It is a very thin, Um, set of circumstances duct taped together of if all of these 10 things are in places, then I will get what I want, right? But that's not actually the power of your mind. That's, you know, I need to live in a perfect fantasy world that doesn't actually exist because things like this are gonna keep happening, right? Whether that is pandemics or recessions or you might get a divorce, God forbid, knock on wood, knocking on wood for you over here. Um, You know, you could lose a family member, um, you could, move to another country where you don't know anyone. There's so many things that could happen to you, um, to anyone. And this idea that your money mindset is just gonna drop is really, really weak. And so one of the things that I'm doing for my team right now is every single week I'm hosting um, weekly coronavirus support meetings. And one of the things that we talked about in this week 
is we talked about this idea of the self-care circle. I have no idea who invented that, so if anyone knows, please post it down below. Um, Cause I always like to give credit where credit's due. Hey Tara. So the idea of a self-care circle is that you have many different things inside of that that you can do to take care of yourself. The problem is if you only have one thing in the self-care circle, right, piece of the pie, and that whole pie is gone, you're gonna have a breakdown pretty quickly. If you think about young kids, like 16 year olds, 17 year olds, who all they wanna do is be an Olympic gymnast, and then they blow out their knee, and they have nothing else in their life, that's gonna be massively destabilizing. So the idea is we need to kind of spread that out across other things. So if your self-care, if your routine has been destabilized because maybe you're not able to go out and get a massage, or you're not able to go out and get shopping, or you're not able to you know, go out and get your hair done or nails done or whatever, you still need to have a really strong, holistic, well-rounded self-care circle. The same is true for your mindset. Your mindset cannot be dependent on you know, a very specific set of conditions. You need to be able to make it work and have the belief that no matter what, because that's the thing, conditions are outside of you, right? That's external. The thing about mindset and money mindset is the belief that it's all inside of me, right? That it's internal. So we have to stop worrying about all these external circumstances and saying that our success is somehow not gonna happen because that's just a bunch of bullshit. I'm really sorry. I sincerely apologize if there are any kids listening. I promise not to swear too much, but that is some straight up bullshit if you think that you can't get what you want because of external circumstances, right? The power has always been inside of you. It has always, always, always been inside of you. Why do you think that just because there's a pandemic going on that all of a sudden you don't have the power to make it happen? That just doesn't even make sense. Like it literally does not make sense. Like you rewrote your mindset rules just because of what's going on. Like you're like, I used to believe this was, so it was, ugh. I used to believe this was true, but then coronavirus happens. So now there's a whole new, you know, set of rules. That just isn't how it works. So money mindset is money mindset is money mindset. Your beliefs are your beliefs are your beliefs are your beliefs, right? If you're religious, it's like people who have a situation that kind of like shakes their faith in God. And then, you know, a few years later, they kind of find that back again. And they realize like, I'm the one who changed. It's not God that changed right? Like I'm the one who lost faith. That's not that he stopped showing up for me. If, if that's, you know, what you believe to be true, it's that exact same principle, right? It was always inside of you. It was always, always, always inside of you. So I want you to keep that in mind. So beliefs around money mindset. If anyone has their own belief about money mindset in a sentence, I want you to drop that down below. So for you, it might be law of attraction. I need to be an energetic match for money. Um, your belief could be that money is the root of all evil. It doesn't matter. The good, well, that does matter. But the most important thing is that you have that awareness of what your money mindset is. The big thing is, has my money mindset changed since coronavirus? Because it honestly shouldn't. And I'm also gonna be talking to you about some statistics for all of my nerds so that you understand that you actually shouldn't be freaking out right now. But your money mindset has never mattered more. And the big thing about money, so when I teach mindset, I teach that there are three pillars. Abundance, guidance, and choice. To learn about money mindset with me, you can take my mindset course, you can take my sales course, or just keep tuning in because I'm gonna drop it for free right here for you. Pillar number one, abundance. There's always more money circulating. That is a tried and true money mindset belief that everyone teaches us, that there's always more money circulating in the world, right? That money never truly disappears, it just changes form or it goes into a different place, right? It's might not be in your bank account at the moment, but it might be in someone else's bank account, or it might be over here, it might be over here. Money doesn't disappear, it just flows into other places. Why would that not still be true now? It's not that all of the money in the world has suddenly been burnt to the ground. First of all, money isn't even a paper thing anymore, it's a digital concept. But it's not that it's gone anywhere. It's not that it's not accessible to you. The truth is that tons of millionaires are made during times of economic recession. Also, my friends, it's not technically a recession yet. There needs to be two quarters where the financial growth goes down instead of up. So if that happens two quarters in a row, then we can have that conversation. We can definitely talk about recession proofing your business, but don't freak out now. And also don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. okay? So if I'm looking down, it's because I'm looking at my notes, by the way. But money never disappears. There are literally trillions of dollars on this planet and it's your duty to claim your share of that. Here's what I believe to be true. What I believe to be true in my stated mission at Team Sabrina is to empower women through entrepreneurship. You've probably heard me say that a lot and honestly, you're gonna hear me say that every day till the day that I die because that's what I believe my mission is, right? To help women start businesses. The reason why I'm so passionate about helping women specifically is I believe that the world would be a better place with women in power and with money in the hands of women. My most favorite example of this is Jacinda Ardern, who's the Prime Minister of New Zealand. She is a straight up gangster. You should just 
just watch New Zealand politics and you'll be so inspired. But she has this idea of a wellness first economy. Her entire concept is let's put people first. It seems so crazy, it seems so radical, and yet that's why I'm so passionate about helping women succeed and be leaders and you know, take their share of what's out there. Also fun fact, um, women tend to make better CEOs and chief financial officers. That's also a fun fact for anyone who's in the corporate space. So there have been so many millionaires that were made in the last recession, and if we do enter into one, the same thing is going to be true for you. And the reason why if you have an online business, now is not the time to be freaking out, is because there has actually been a huge increase in the demand for online businesses recently, but more importantly, this has been a long-standing trend. This is not something that popped up overnight. Over the last you know, five years, 10 years, we've seen so many companies move online. We've also seen a lot of companies that still offer offline services move pieces and portions of their company online anyway. Excuse me, I'm getting lots of notifications. Um, we have all of these companies who are moving things like their call centers or part of their um, companies and things like this online. There are estimates that about 2 billion people will be working online by 2030. I actually expect this to be a lot larger. Um, and the thing about remote work is it's not just an online business concept, it's a, it's a global economic trend. And the reason why is because as our economies globally have developed and we become wealthier and wealthier than we ever have at any time in history, people are starting to value convenience because when people have disposable income, they want their lives to be easier, which means that we don't want to go pick up a video at Blockbuster, we just wanna be able to stream it from our laptops I don't want to have to go try on 10 pairs of jeans at the shop. I would just rather have, you know, at the mall, I would rather just have some jeans delivered to me at my house, even things like bras. So I buy my bras at La Perla. If that's TMI, I'm sorry, but they will literally mail you free bras. And if you don't like it, you send it back. And if you do, then they charge you and they'll send you multiple sizes. They used to tell you this has to be in store. You have to go in store to get measured. Not anymore. All of these things that they tell you, it has to be in store. Not anymore. I didn't know this about Tesla, but apparently you can just buy the car online. And if they, if you want to do a test run, they'll like drive it to your house. I had no idea about that. I don't know anything about cars. I don't know how to drive a car. That's another fun fact. So there's all of these companies that have been moving online anyway over the last several years because there is a trend toward a convenience economy. So do not think that this is something new or that this is something reactive. The companies that succeed will be the ones that deliver the most convenience and ease of use to their customers. Now, this is naturally gonna happen online. Um, you can even just see this with our behavioral patterns. I talked about this in a video last week, but people get so offended when you call them on the phone. No, Laureen, I can't drive. Um, people get so offended when you call them on the phone. It has to be like a text message or something. It's like, oh my gosh, you're calling me? What's wrong with this? Right, so there's this whole trend where we're just so much more digital, we're so much more connected to our phones. People expect that if you tweet a company that they get a response within 27 minutes. So there are now global corporations who have round the clock social media teams to be able to address people. People want things fast, people want things easy, and people want things digitally. So keep that in mind, that this is not just a one-time trend, this is something that has been coming for years. Will it be exacerbated by this? Absolutely. I've been talking with some of my friends who are in corporate who are making multiple six figure, even seven figure salaries per year. And they're talking about how entire departments of their company will not be coming back. They've just decided, you know what? Let's just have the marketing people work from home. My mom and dad actually have worked from home my entire life. I can't remember, maybe when I was a baby or you know, a young toddler, they went into an office, but I can only ever remember my parents working from home. That is my expectation of what's normal, which that might explain why I never wanted to get a real job um, or you know, go into an office or a cubicle, but I've only ever known the ability to work from home. The other reason why we're going to see a lot of companies make the shift is because people who work from home tend to be happier and tend to be more productive. Now, this has also been a huge issue for companies over the last several years where they've seen their top talent leave them because millennials who have grown up in the era of convenience and having things, I'm not having like a Ugh, millennials love it so easy thing. It's just a fact. People like things to be easy and convenient and delivered to their doorstep. They don't wanna be in an office from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and be you know shamed and shunned for taking two weeks of vacation a year. Right, they wanna be able to do what they wanna do. So they have really struggled with their top talent leaving them. We're gonna see all of these teams moving remote that are gonna be way happier and more productive. 
if you know anyone who has had to drive an hour to go to work every day and then an hour to come back, that two hour commute being taken off their day is going to make a massive difference in their happiness, their productivity, and the time that they spend with their family. Um, there have also been a lot of companies who report that remote workers are more likely to buy houses, to have babies, to invest, to save for their 401ks in their retirement because it just affects everything. So the world moving online is actually quite a good thing. So all of that to say, now more than ever is, to have the time, is the time to build an online business. This is a trend that has been coming for years. It is not something new. It is not something reactive. It is something strategic and it is something that you should have done a year ago but you know, they have that saying that the best time to plant a tree was however many years ago, let's say 40 years ago. The second best time is now, like now is the time to plant the seed and to start building your online business. And this is not just true for online business coaches. Everyone wants to have services online. I can take a Pilates class online. I can take a yoga class online. I mentioned earlier that every single week I have coronavirus support meetings for my team members. I sent an email yesterday to a wine guy in Portugal so that he can do a wine education class with us. Having that accessibility online has completely shifted our ability to interact and engage and do business with each other. This is not something reactive. This is something that's been coming for a really long time. So online business is about to explode. There's about to be a massive, massive boom. As I've said, I've seen an increase in sales and an increase in inquiries, uh, both for my services and also just from people who message us saying, hey, how do I start an online business? Do you have any tips for me? So it is literally about to explode. So now is the time, right? This is literally the internet online business gold rush. Now, the big thing that I want us to keep in mind though here is if you are thinking about starting an online business, the big thing I'm gonna shift over a little bit to chatting about sales is we really wanna make sure that we're communicating in this environment that they're, that our services are an essential and we're really clearly communicating the value of what it is that we're actually offering. So I'm gonna chat a little bit about how sales and sales strategies have shifted post coronavirus. Um, I'm also gonna be giving you an insight to two of the launches that I recently had. So my sold out sales launch and also my Start Your Online Business Academy launch um, and how we made those so successful. So first things first, one thing that's always been true about sales and is still true now is that in order for someone to invest, they need to believe that the value being gained is greater than the price being paid. What that means is if they feel confident that the money that they're handing over is worth it or that what they're getting back is greater in value than the investment, then that is a really easy yes for people. The reason why people have objections and they question you know, whether or not that investment is worth it is because they just don't know. There's still a lingering question of, do I have the time for this? Can I afford this? Is this actually gonna make a difference? Is this going to offer me a meaningful service? Is this going to change my life? Is this going to make me happy? Even little things, like if you've ever bought something like cute on Anthropology or like a unicorn mug or something like random and weird, like something super weird that only you would like, in your mind, you were like, yup, totally worth it, right? Like for me, the thing that I bought over Christmas time was I bought reindeer slippers in my mind, totally worth the $13, completely worth it. And there might be some of you who are thinking, what the heck, Sabrina, $13 on reindeer slippers? For me, super worth it. And so that's the thing about value. Your ideal client is always going to see your service as valuable. That's a universal truth that has not changed. Your ideal client can always afford your services. Your ideal client always sees the value in your services. Your job is to get in front of your ideal client and to communicate that value exceptionally perfectly well. So the big key here is that the value being gained is greater than the price being paid. Now the shift that's going to happen in consumer behavior and in purchasing decisions, if we do enter into an economic recession, is that people, and we're even seeing this now, um, anytime there's any sort of economic downturn, uh, consumer behavior starts to shift. And the biggest one, the easiest way to communicate this is people are gonna start making decisions between what is a luxury and what is an essential. So luxury goods, luxury services, going to the movie theater, things like that, um, you know, going to water parks, going to, uh, you know, fairs and shows and things like that, that does typically um, tend to decline just because people have this hoarder mentality and they want to stay in and they want to, you know, hold on to what they've got. That being said, that person probably isn't your ideal client anyway, one. Two, there's a lot of people who aren't in that economic situation right now. There's a lot of people who are online business owners who need your services and want to invest, 
There are a lot of people who just lost their job and they realize that now is the time to get a nine to five. There are a lot of people who are collecting payment checks even though they're not working and they're realizing, you know what, my job sucks. I never wanna be furloughed or laid off or have my economic security be in the hands of some guy that I don't even know. I wanna start my own thing. There are a ton of people who are still in a position to invest and want to invest. Um, I'm investing every single day in other businesses and other services. We made a commitment to our team that don't worry guys, we're not gonna let anyone go. Your hours are safe with us um, because that was really important to us to communicate. So the big decision framework here, let's even just operate on this idea that every single person has that mentality. Every single person on the world has a hoarder mentality. Let's assume, it's not true, but let's assume. World of hoarders, um, they can do a big, what's that, HB, TBS, TLC? A big giant TLC world episode of the world. Everyone is a hoarder. The thing about hoarders is they're gonna make a decision between what is a luxury and what is an essential. Now, the big thing is if you can communicate your product or your service as an essential, then people are going to invest in that. And if they see that the value being gained is greater than the price being paid, then they are going to see that as an essential. The other thing to take note of is that what is an essential has shifted a lot for people over the last several years. So people would not have previously seen investing in, you know, pricey uh, gym memberships or yoga clubs or wellness retreats as something that is an essential, but for a lot of people nowadays, it just is because we're in the avocado toast economy. We're in the avocado toast, you know, millennial culture where that's just a thing. You wanna get your $12 kombucha. So for a lot of people, that is very much an essential and that is their energetic minimum that no matter what, I'm going to have these 10 things in my life. So if you communicate that to people as an essential rather than a luxury, they're going to be more likely to invest. So here's what I mean by that. If I'm commuting, communicating business coaching as some luxury thing that like, it would be a nice to have, it would be cool to have, but it's not actually gonna move the needle forward in your business, people aren't going to invest in that. But if business coaching is going to be the thing that's going to help you make more money in your business, and I actually can deliver that through my results, and the value being gained is greater than the price being paid, maybe, for example, people invest $1,000 in a program and they're able to make $20,000 back, that is so much value for the price being paid. So that's a really easy yes in people's mind. So the big two things here are communicate your services or your products as an essential um, and help really dial into the deeper why for why someone would invest in that. So for example, no one actually wants a certain number of coaching calls. No one actually wants a certain number of video trainings. So that doesn't really mean anything to anyone. What they want is their business to grow and succeed and make more money. Cool, what's the deeper why? So for some people, my, for example, my deeper why is to travel and have freedom. Um, I am a free bird. If there is any sort of like rule or like regulation or suggestion, I immediately rebel against it, even if I somewhat agree with it in my mind, but my brain is just like, no rules. Nope, can't do it. The government's like, Sabrina, stay in your house. I love to stay in my house. I'm such an introvert and all of a sudden I'm like, I wanna go for a walk 10 times a day. <laughs> But there's just kind of this like mindset shift going on there. So really just communicating that the value being gained, again, is greater than the price being paid. So if you are communicating this in a way that it's going to help people with, and you speak to the deeper why, that's the point I wanted to make. You're speaking to the deeper why, right? That desire for freedom or that desire for independence or that desire to feel really good in your body or, you know, not be you know, pigging out on chips on the couch every day, 10 times a day, if you really speak to the deeper why, then this is going to be a lot easier to make that sale. The other thing I want everyone to keep in mind throughout all of this is that sales is an act of service. So there are a lot of people right now who are feeling kind of icky about sales and thinking, well, I shouldn't be selling right now. There's so many people that are suffering. And all of that is true. And one thing I talk about with my clients and team members and things like that is that it's possible to have mixed emotions. It's possible to feel two different ways about something. So we can be really sad and um, disheartened and disturbed by what's going on out in the world. And for ourselves, we can still be really excited about our business growth and our financial growth and our opportunities. So this idea of sales being an act of service, the reason why I say that is because you are not here to take money from anyone. You are not stealing from anyone. The point of your service is to make someone's lives or businesses better right? Even if the thing is the $13 reindeer slippers from Amazon, those brought a fucking smile to my face, okay? They made my life better. Even if it was instant gratification, it brought a smile to my face. Going to the movie theater, that's something nice to do with your partner for two hours. Um, 
you know, going to a yoga class, so many people have an immediate endorphins hit and long-term it's something that's gonna make you feel more flexible and happier and healthier in your body. Um, if, if that's what feels true for you, everyone has a different relationship to fitness. But the thing is you're delivering a service and you are sparking joy, right? Marie Kondo, it sparks joy in our hearts um, or in our businesses and we actually see direct results from that. So for me, I don't feel icky about selling at all because my business literally helps people start online businesses reclaim financial independence and make their own money and not be dependent on what's going on. So my clients right now are actually seeing an increase in their income. They're not seeing a decrease. So one of my clients, Christina, just had her second $100,000 cash month. Uh, my client Marie just had a $50,000 launch. My client Isabella just had a $42,000 launch. My client Taylor just sold a $25,000 package. Um, my client Tracy, who's watching this, just sold a $5,000 package. So there are so many people. Oh, my client Crystal, she was just on the news. And you would be thinking that, oh, it's only business coaches growing right now. Crystal is a coupon coach, an educator, and they're bringing her on the news and she's just crushing it and doing so, so, so well. And if your business is being cut right now and you're seeing a decline in services or in clients, it's because they see you as a luxury. So what that means is we need to uh, revamp and relook at the way we're communicating our value to our clients. Um, I have a team uh, that I work with um, and they do failed payment recovery. So what that basically means is they keep track of everyone whose payments fail and they reach out to them and they say, um, hey, your payment failed, can we help you um, you know, get current and regain access to your services? So something that they do that's brilliant is every single month they send me an email and it tells me um, how much money uh, we had in failed payments, how much money was recovered, the percentage, and they're super cute about it. So like one month we had like a super high recovery rate, we had like 70% recovery. And so they sent us a little video of them dancing, right? That's really clearly communicating the value to me. You had this much in failed payments and we recovered this much and put it back into your bank account. I'm not gonna, they, they don't have to worry about losing my business, right? Because they're very clearly communicating the value to me. Um, all of my team members, I am so lucky to have such an awesome team. We have 30 people on our team, I think more like 32. But let's go with 30. We've got 30 people on our team and all of them are essential to us because they all deliver awesome, awesome services. So if you are seeing a decline in business, it's because people are making that mental decision of is this a luxury or the, is this an essential? So one, go ahead and re-engage that conversation and really tell them why um, your services are so awesome in bomb.com. And so the way that I teach creating online businesses, specifically service-based businesses, is that your message is what you believe to be true. And what you believe to be true deep in your heart is like the thing that you are going to yell into a microphone, like stand on a building, yell at everyone, that's your soapbox. I believe that online business is the thing. So me communicating the value of now more than ever is the time to double down in your coaching programs, to watch your videos, to show up to calls, to get support, to message me in Voxer, because that's what's going to make the difference and help them make more money. I have not had a single client come to me who said, all of my clients are gone. I have had a few clients lose one or two people. Every single other person has seen an increase, especially my higher level masterminds. All of them are doing excellent. So that's the thing, right? They're communicating their value. They're being rock stars. They're showing up. They're doing what needs to be done. So here's what I want everyone to do. There's 50 people watching, so I want to see 50 comments. Tell me in the comments why your service is so valuable. Now, this might be uncomfortable or like, weird for you because you're like, but do I have any value? Like, do people actually need my service? Like, am I actually an essential? Like, oh my gosh, maybe I'm one of those luxury people. I promise you, you are essential. For someone, you are absolutely essential, right? One thing I talk about is my Birkin bags and my Kelly bags and things like that. There's some of you who are just like, Sabrina, you've absolutely lost your mind. I spent $18,000 on my Birkin bag and now it's like sitting on the corner on the carpet. For some of you, that would just be like, you straight up lost your mind. For me, essential. I was like, I have to have this. This is gonna make me so happy. I got it the month that I had my first $200,000 cash month. So I was like, hashtag worth it. But for me, it was like, this sparks joy. Like for me, I am an ideal client. You might not be an ideal client, but I will always be an ideal client for Hermes. I will always see the value in their services and their bags and their products. And I will always go ahead and invest in them, right? Because that's my energetic minimum. My energetic minimum is that those are just the bags that I buy. That's just how I live my life. So you, I promise, have ideal clients who feel the exact same way about you. If there's a crazy lady who will spend $18,000 on a bag, 
I promise you there are people who will spend $3,000 on your coaching packages or $1,000 on your course or $10,000 on your mastermind or $10 for your Etsy mugs. I promise you there's an audience out there. Your job is to find them and communicate to them in a way that makes them feel seen and understood and heard. And again, that the value being gained is greater than the price being paid. So some of you are saying, um, Vera said that she gives happiness to kids and families. That's awesome. Nika helps burnout, uh, help burnout coaches set boundaries and get them that missing piece of the puzzle for their business to succeed. Awesome. Madison helps um, intimidating women find and maintain healthy relationships. I love it. Um, Rachel helps clients scale their revenue and reach through transformational courses. So good. All of us. All of us, all of us, all of us have massive value to deliver in the world. And that's what I meant by messaging, like what we believe to be true. You really have to get locked in on your value and believe to be true that you are an essential and you are here to help people, right? Because there's so many different types of people. There's 8 billion people on the planet. There are some people who no matter what are going to spend money on organic food and they are going to spend money on yoga classes and they are going to spend money on crystals and you know spiritual books and things like that and for them that's super essential there are some people that is absolutely essential for them to like keep their motorcycles or their like um vintage cars in check and just keep those like perfect like everyone is so different which is what's amazing about this world is that we can all be so unique but the good news about that is there's literally an audience for everything and people still have money and people still want to spend money so your job is to also keep spending money and keep circulating money because if you're in that mindset of hoard, 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 you will attract hoard, hoard, hoarders, okay? If you're in that money, if you're in that energy of abundance, you are going to attract people who feel the same way. So whether you believe in mindset or not, just even from a brain psychology perspective, there's this idea that we only see and register um, what we know, uh, what we are focused on. So for example, Let's say you are super focused on getting a black um, Audi. You really wanna get a black Audi. You're gonna drive down the road and all you're gonna see is black Audis. You're not even gonna pay attention to Toyotas or um, Hondas or anything like that, Cadillacs, whatever. Your brain is only going to see black Audis because there's so much information out there and our brain can only process some of it so what it does is it makes selective decisions on what it's going to show into your periphery so if you are focused on the world is ending money is running out things are crashing down things are burning it's hell duh, that's what you're going to see all you're going to see is the story about oh my gosh did you see that story about the entire family who got locked in a house and they all died of coronavirus oh my gosh did you see that story about the um, school teacher who's now living on the street and is so hungry. Oh my gosh, did you see that um, my, you know, second cousin twice removed just lost her job and da 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 Like all of that stuff is still happening in the world, yes. And you can still be a compassionate, empathetic person, yes. And also what you focus on expands. And if you're in that mindset of everything is burning down, you're not gonna be a very good helper in that situation because we do still have a responsibility for those of us who are successful and thriving and doing well right now to be helpers. So if you're in that mindset and energy of abundance, you're gonna be in a much better place to be helping others and to be donating and to be leaders and to be showing up for people. And that's what the world needs right now, right? We need to be showing up and giving value and really helping people get more of what they want and just you know, giving that services that we believe to be so essential. So for me, I'm not gonna stop selling right now. You know, I'm in the I'm in my second launch since post coronavirus. I my first one was sold out sales, um, which did extremely well. We added about thirteen thousand dollars a month in monthly recurring revenue um just from that one launch. From um the academy, I think we'll do even more than that. So we um yesterday alone we did about twenty five thousand dollars in sales. Um, and that was in just one day, right? And it's just gonna keep going up, up, and up. We've got about 10 or 11 days. It's Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 11 days, 11 days left in the launch. So we've got we've got a lot of time, right? It's still gonna keep going. Um, so what's really needed now when it comes to sales, right? What's needed now? More personalization. Um, if people are making that decision between, is this a lecture, is this an essential? The most dangerous thing that can happen in sales is that people process objections on their own. It is a lot easier for you if people tell you your objections. That's why I'm such a fan of sales calls. So if you've been hating sales calls, 
You need to get over it. You need to get really good at them and you need to start delivering them because people have a question. It is normal to have more objections at this time. And I guarantee you that the number one objections people are gonna be having right now is this is really expensive. I'm not sure I can afford it. The reason why they say that is not necessarily because they don't have the money in the bank account. It's because they don't know if they should take that money and spend it on you and your service. And that's because they don't know that the value being gained is greater than the price being paid. Yes, everyone, everyone with me, everyone get me. So that personalization is super important. Showing up and giving massive value is huge. Um, I am a big believer. Someone posted this super funny meme. It's like the Drake meme where he's like, Oh, no, no. And then it's like, yes, yes, yes. So it was like you chasing prospects. No, no, no. And then like prospects chasing you. Yes, yes, yes. That's what we're doing here, right? We need to show up and give massive value. So people come to us. So people want to have conversations with us. But when they do come to you, it's really important that you capture that lead and have that conversation with them and really um, get the ball rolling. So there needs to be much more personalization in our sales right now. We need to be showing up and giving massive value. That needs to be for your business, that needs to be for your team members, that needs to be for your clients, right? The reason why it's so good to be showing up and really over delivering for your clients right now is because again, everyone is gonna start having that conversation of what is a luxury versus what is an essential. And I know that my clients are gonna stay with me because they see me as an absolute essential to grow their business. So for me, I feel super rock solid and still I'm always finding ways to deliver more value for my clients. The other thing I wanna talk about is should I drop my prices? So I've been getting this question a lot of, should I drop my prices? Should I ship to low ticket? Should I be selling a course or something else? I don't think that's necessarily true at all. Instead of dropping your prices, I would instead consider extended payment plans. The other thing also is if someone does come to you and they say, hey, I'm not sure I can afford services right now, or I'm not sure that I can you know, buy that offer or kind of invest in that thing, instead of being like, yep, sure, let's cancel this, I would instead redirect the conversation of like, how can I help you? So if you're a business coach, this is really easy. So like, yep, I totally get it, you're super stressed. Um, let's have a conversation about what's going on in your business and maybe I can help you make some shifts and tweaks. They go take massive action, they come back to me, yep, good to go, I'm feeling awesome. I had a client that this happened to, two weeks later she came back and she paid in full. Um, instead of cutting prices, extended payment plans, something that we did during sold out sales was we had an extended payment plan for nine months, nine monthly payments of 197. Um, I think we had 23 people sign up for that one. Um, and we had a bunch of other people who signed up for the normal 12 bi-weekly payments payment plan. Um, the other thing that you can also do is make sure you have a down sell. This is why a product suite is super important. Um, but the thing about that's really challenging about having one offer is if you only ever have one offer and people can't afford that one thing, then you kind of lost them. So if you have something to down sell them to, then you can deliver massive value, whether that's in... Facebook ads, life coaching, business coaching, birth coaching, relationship coaching, copywriting, whatever it is, have a down sell, capture them. And then what you can say is, hey, I would love to credit this toward a larger package if you'd like to keep working together. But that's an opportunity for you to show up and deliver massive value. So sales has not changed, money mindset has not changed. Are there some tweaks we can make? Sure, and also you probably should have been doing these things from the beginning. You should have always had a down sell. You should have always showed massive value. You should always be personalizing the sales process. You should always be doubling down on your mindset. So nothing has really changed. The situation is just a massive clarifier for a lot of people, right? On like, what actually matters to me? Like, how am I actually spending my time? How, like, am I actually even living? Am I actually doing something that lights my soul on fire and makes me happy? So many people are coming into direct confrontation with their mortality right now and they're questioning everything. And all of that to say, there's about to be an online business boom. So if you're wondering, is there a place for me? Is there, is this now a good time to start? What if I don't even know what my business idea is? What if I don't even know who I wanna serve or how I wanna serve them? All of that is super normal. Everyone had to start there, even I had to start there. I might be making multiple seven figures a year now, but even I once was like, what the heck do I actually do? My first job was as a virtual assistant. Social media management virtual assistant, $12 an hour. That was my first online job. And now I would charge 20 times that for an hour, right? So it's just completely, completely shifted, but that's because I kept showing up imperfectly. You don't need to have the entire game plan, you just need to keep showing up. So an exercise I've been giving some of my clients lately is if you have no idea what you wanna do, commit to a certain amount of live streams. I would do 21 days every single day. The first day you just make a live stream saying, I'm not sure what I wanna do exactly, but I know I wanna start an online business and here's why. 
And every single day, as you keep showing up and taking action, you're going to get clarity through action. You do not need to know, you know, the end goal, what the actual like painted Mona Lisa is gonna look like. You just need to make the first brush stroke, okay? You just need to get started. So your money mindset has never mattered more than it does now. Circulating money is still absolutely key. You have to put that abundance out there into the world and really let the world meet you where you're at. It's The world is always gonna meet you where you're at, right? If you're in that hoarder mentality, that's what the world is gonna reflect back to you. Our reality is always, always, always a reflection of our thoughts. Woo-woo stuff aside, our brains are going to focus on whatever feels most true for us and whatever it is that we are focusing on. If all you can think about is stress and anxiety and you know, my business is failing and the world is failing and the economy is crashing down. That's all you're going to see. And it's not just about your beliefs. It's also about your behaviors because your beliefs are going to influence the behaviors that you take and the actions that you take. So if I believe right now that there's going to be an online business boom and this shit is blowing up right now, I'm going to be getting on live streams every day. I'm going to be selling my programs. I'm going to be delivering massive value. I'm going to be investing in team members. I just expanded. I just doubled the hours for my one of my staff copywriters I made her my head of marketing and I doubled her hours, right? We're thinking about hiring another person to come do funnels for us. I wanna hire another customer support person. Like there's so many things that I wanna do to expand and grow my business right now because I know that there's about to be an online business boom. And that's the mindset that I want you to take. If you remember nothing else from this live stream, I'm really sorry that you listened to me ramble for like an hour, but if you remember nothing else, please remember that there is about to be an online business boom and there has been and always will be a place for you in the online community. There is an audience for everything. Anything can be taken online and turned into a service that people want and need. And that's the thing, whatever you really believe to be true is an essential service for someone. Now, the question that I've been giving a lot of my clients lately that I'm gonna go ahead and leave you with before I take some questions is, if one person took your program or service or bought your Etsy mug and on the other side of it, they felt better or they were a better person or they were happier, and then let's go ahead and assume that's true. If every single person took your course or service or bought your mug or course or whatever it is, if the world would be a better place, then you absolutely have a duty and a responsibility to get that out into the world. So if you have money mindset or sales questions, start dropping them down below because I want to take them for you. Um, I did want to go ahead and let you know that if you are interested in starting an online business and you would like me to be your coach for six months, I have a new program. It's called the Start Your Online Business Academy. It's $9.97 or six monthly payments of $1.97 and we are enrolling now. Stacy says keep rambling. I love rambling. I could ramble all day. That's what the academy is. The academy is me rambling for six months, but not because it's actually quite structured and pretty excellent. Um, but the academy, I'm just going to run through for you what's included and how it works. And I'm going to take like two minutes, so hang tight with me. But in the meantime, put your questions down below about sales or money mindset. So start your online business academy. It's a six month group program. Um, it's $9.97, so a thousand bucks. This is actually the cheapest thing I sell. My courses are $14.97 um, and those are six weeks. So this is pretty dope. Um, let me tell you what is included because I want to make sure I don't miss anything. There's so much stuff actually. I need to have, I have like a map. I also have five bonuses at the moment. I have five bonuses. That's why I need to pull it up. Um, coffee chat. I'm searching for it. Okay, excellent. Here's what we've got. Eight video training modules, which you receive immediately. So as soon as you sign up, you're gonna get a link to your uh, course hub. Your course hub has everything for you. It's gonna have eight video training modules and eight workbooks um, so that you can start getting all the business information you need and taking notes on how to build your online business empire. Every single month, we're gonna have a group coaching session where we're gonna focus on um, business and goal setting and mindset blocks. So pretty much what we've just done, but we're gonna actually have the opportunity to chat back and forth. So I lead that at the beginning of every single month. And then there's also a specific business training session with my fiance and the chief operating officer for our company, Paul Thompson, um, which happens later in the month. There are also weekly business building activities. We call them BBAs. Um, and so a BBA is something like a three through three exercise or a mindset journaling prompt, um, or we have a BBA all about how to write a team member job description. Um, so we help you take action every single week in your business. We also have weekly co-working sessions. So these are one hour sessions where you can get on Zoom and just get stuff done. So if you really struggled with not taking your business seriously or maybe not getting your partner to take your business seriously and really committing that time, 
you can show up to the co-working session and we can work on that together um, and we can get stuff done. There's also monthly coffee chats. Now this is really important for me because I want us all to be able to connect as a community and I think that's so needed right now. Um, you have a team of support coaches to help you. We've got five awesome support coaches. We have Coach Rosie, who's in the UK. We have Coach Naomi, who's in Hawaii. Coach Athena, who's in Australia. We have Coach Julia, who's in Canada. And then we have Coach Robin, who's our head coach, and she is in North Carolina. So we have an awesome community of support coaches who are in there to answer all of your questions. Um, now, let's talk about the hot and juicy bonuses, and then we'll jump into your questions. So the first bonus is as soon as you sign up, we will send you some information so that you can book a private coaching kickoff call with a support coach. Now, this is going to be a 30 minute call where they're going to walk you through everything that's included in the program because we want to make sure you can take advantage and they're going to help you make a game plan so you know what you should be focusing on selling right now. Um, the other thing that happens is every quarter we have new guest experts come into the program and lead trainings. You're also going to get quarterly guest professor trainings. We have three bonuses that are disappearing. I'm gonna mention those to you now and then I'm gonna jump into your questions. The first disappearing bonus that disappears on Monday is the ramp up program. Now the ramp up is when your first four weeks of the academy, you have weekly group coaching calls with me. So we really hit the ground running on that first month. The second disappearing bonus is a ticket to the Intentional Entrepreneur Live virtual event that's happening May 29th through 31st. So it's a virtual event. You can tune in from anywhere in the world. You do not need to be in Miami as we had originally planned. So that disappears on Sunday. And then the, sec uh, the third disappearing bonus that disappears on Monday is a second private coaching call with a support coach. So you won't get one, you will get two. So you can sign up for $9.97 or uh, six monthly payments of $1.97. I will drop the link for you into the chat box. If you have questions, please ask them to me, send me a DM, email my team, whatever you need to do. Um, but we would love to see you in there. We have so many people enrolled and we're so excited for them. Also, I like surprising my people. So there's also some things included in the Academy that you don't know about just yet. Um, so I'm gonna drop that link for you and then I'm going to take your questions. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's see what we've got. Oops, I can unplug that. I've got my laptop down here. So if I look down, that's why. Okay. So Leah has the question, how do I overcome I can't afford this? Okay, awesome question, Leah. So the reason why that objection is coming up is because someone is saying, is basically feeling that the value being gained isn't greater than the price being paid. Now, there are some people who genuinely can't afford your product or service. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, um, we wanna be able to filter those people out pretty early on in the sales process. Now, you can do that through qualifying questions. There's so many ways that you can make that happen. Um, but you want to make sure you have that question answered before you get onto a sales call. If someone says that on a sales call and they know what the pro uh, what the um, offer was worth and they knew what it cost it, what it, it was going to cost them, then they've made a mental decision that the value being gained is not greater than the price being paid. So what you could go ahead and do is you could either um, bring that up like, um, I know previously that the price had been, you know, communicated and we let you know that before we hopped on the call. I was just curious if there was um, something that if it was included in the program, it would make it feel more worth it for you or um, would it feel easier if we talked about an extended payment plan? So you could go ahead and have that option. The other thing you could go ahead and do is just downsell that person so that you don't lose that sale. Um, Mariana has a question, how do I overcome, do I know enough to teach? Am I really an expert in the subject? That is a great question. So what's coming up here is a little bit of imposter syndrome. Now, the big thing to keep in mind is that you do not need to know everything about every one and every, like you don't need to know everything on the subject. What you need is to be a few steps ahead of the next person. And the big thing here is just communicating that with integrity. So you don't wanna be um, pretending to know things that you don't, but you just wanna be very specific on, this is what I do know, this is what I can specifically help you with, these are the results that you can expect. But you don't need to know everything, you just need to be a few steps ahead of someone. So one way that you can go ahead and trial this belief is you need to, or you don't need to, but you could consider doing a free coaching call or a free trial service if it's a done for you service with someone and at the end of it, ask them and see, did you gain anything from this? Do you feel that you learned something today? If the answer is yes, you're in a good spot. Um, so that might be something to consider doing. Faria says, when it comes to money mindset, what are the best ways to uncover your deepest limiting beliefs? That's a good question. I would look at your behaviors and your pattern. So a pattern for some people, like you hear that story of someone who has that pattern of 
like oh she's always in a relationship like she's never not single that's a pattern like what could be the belief that is facilitating that pattern because that pattern is showing up because they're taking certain actions they're taking certain actions because they're believing certain things so you can reverse engineer limiting beliefs by looking at behaviors or patterns um, the other thing also is you can a lot of times have this reflected back to you by the people closest to you um, so that's what I would go ahead and do there and also just lots of journaling I think will be really valuable for you um, Alegria says, do I have enough results to teach this? Can I actually create this transformation? Am I really an expert? Um, similar question to Mariana, so see above. Um, Heather says, what is the best way to work through limiting beliefs? So the big thing about working through a limiting belief is we need to understand where did it come from? So what's the story? Like what's the initial core wound? Because the thing is you weren't born with limiting beliefs, right? They were projected onto you by society and family members and friends and stupid ex-boyfriends and things like that right? Like your boyfriend told you that you suck. So you're like, oh, I suck. So like you aren't dating people, right? But is that actually true? No, it's just that someone told you that. So you need to figure out what is actually what happened here. Like what's the story I'm telling myself? Where did it come from? Look at that situation and say, well, was that actually true? Do I actually suck or does my boyfriend suck? You know, that's the thing that kind of needs to happen there. Or like, let's say you had a teacher who told you that, you know, you're so stupid. You're never going to amount to anything was the teacher actually right or was the teacher kind of a bitch? Like that's the thing that needs to happen there. Beyond that though, it's not enough to just work on this once, it's a continuous shift of the thought. So when the thought does come up of, oh my gosh, like I'm so dumb, I'm never gonna amount to anything, in that moment catching it and saying, that's not true, I'm actually quite smart and capable, look at these 10 things that I've accomplished, right? Like, oh my gosh, my boyfriend was right, I'm such a loser, I suck, like, nope, my boyfriend was a loser, I'm actually pretty fucking awesome and I'm going to attract someone awesome into my life. So it's that continuous shifting of the thought in the moment. Now, do not judge yourself or hate on yourself if you don't catch it right away or you sit in it a little bit, but shift it as quickly as you possibly can because the more you shift that thought, that constant repetition is where it's actually going to shift long-term. So that's the big thing. Two big things need to happen. One, deep work. Two, continuous shifting of the thought. Patricia says, I know that entrepreneurs and business owners need financial and tax support, but I'm fighting with my mindset of waiting till things pick up. I keep thinking they can't afford my services, but I know logically that they can since there are loans and other programs out there to help business owners. How can I overcome this? Um, let me just reread this because it was a long question, but I'm finding my mindset of waiting until things pick up. They can't afford my services, but I know logically that they can since there are loans and other programs out there to help business owners. How can I overcome this? Okay, so that's the thing. Your mindset is basically saying like tax and financial services are a luxury, but in reality, it's quite an essential. And especially if you speak to the deeper why that someone wants, which their deeper why might be, I wanna save more of my money and keep it in my bank account rather than the government's, right? So if you focus on investing in tax strategy and investing in financial advice will keep more money in your pocket, right? Um, this is a great example. I have a client who is a couponer. So she's a master coupon coach, huge YouTuber, Cooper, coupon educator, um, and she helps people coupon. If all she focused on was, I will teach you all about couponing, 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 no one actually gives a shit about couponing. But if she focused on this person saved $500 by couponing, people are gonna pay attention to that, right? It's quite worth it to spend 50 bucks on you know, a membership if you're gonna save $500. So if that's what you can really focus on, on why this isn't essential, that's gonna shift it for you. Um, Vera, watch all the free content, watch the mini course, watch the workbook, do the work. There will always be another program with me. I'm not going anywhere. We're gonna work together when the time is right and I want you to keep that in mind, okay? Just because right now might not be the perfect moment doesn't mean it's not coming. So I want you to watch everything of mine that you can do the work and double down and I'm gonna hold the vision that we're gonna work together one day, okay? Um, I want you to keep that in mind for anyone who does have something that they do wanna invest in but maybe feel like I actually genuinely can't afford this, consume every free piece of content that you can, okay? Before I had a business coach, all I did was read like Tony Robbins books and Gary Vee books and that's it. Okay, Rachel, your question is gonna be my last question and then I'm gonna jump off. So Rachel's question is, I need to get testimonials from previous clients. It's been a hot minute since we worked together. How should I go about it? Um, if you still have relationships with previous clients, go ahead and reach out to them. Um, the other thing also that you can do is maybe not even previous clients, but new clients, you can go ahead and offer um, free services for them or reduce services or things like that. I typically recommend that people who are just getting started and don't have clients um, to go ahead and do that to get some testimonials. All right, everyone, I'm gonna go ahead and jump off now. I had the best time ever with you today. Um, Please, please, please sign up for the Start Your Online Business Academy if that is something that you are 
um, wanting help with, you want to start and grow your online business, enrollment is closing April 20th, but we have a lot of businesses that are bonuses, sorry, um, that are ending on Sunday and Monday. Uh, but yeah, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today and I will see you next time. Bye everyone. Hey everyone, it's Paul here again. Thanks so much for tuning in for another episode of the Sabrina Phillip podcast. Just before you go, I wanted to let you know that for anyone who rates and reviews our podcast, we're going to send you a mug. Just head to sabrinaphillip.com forward slash podcast and we'll give you all the instructions for how to do that. We really appreciate reading those reviews. Um, they really spark joy in our hearts and there's some funny ones in there. So please uh, rate and review the podcast. We'll send you a mug as a thanks and I can't wait to uh, see you back here for the next episode.